quite a lot of anger yesterday, wasn't there? Well, yes. Uh, maybe mainly centering at the city ground where we are actually going to start today's show at. So Liverpool getting a late, late winner th- through Darwin Nunez and uh, it means they've pulled four points clear at the top of the table. Bear in mind, Manchester City do play today against Manchester United, which we'll look ahead to a little bit later on. Arsenal not in action till tomorrow night when they face Sheffield United. But yes, Cass... Bit of drama and late drama in the game between Forest and Liverpool. Uh, Nunes came off the bench yeah. to score what turned out to be the 99th minute winner. It's the latest goal that Liverpool have scored since records began. One for late, yeah. late goals in the Premier League. And as I say, it pulls them four points at the top of the table. As for Forest, well, they, as we all know, struggling. Uh, they are just outside the relegation zone. Mm. Uh, four points clear, though, of Luton. But we knew, do know there's an FFP charge hanging over them. We still yeah. await the outcome of that. But on to footballing matters yesterday. Jurgen Klopp celebrated wildly, as you can well imagine, after that late winner. But Forest players, coaching staff and even their owner, Evangelos Marinakis, surrounded the referee Paul Tierney at the final whistle as they fumed at the decision to give Liverpool the ball after Ibrahim Akanate went down with a head injury shortly before Liverpool went on to score the winning goal. Now, before we talk about mm. it and bring us our own interpretation of what we saw. Uh, Jürgen Klopp spoke to reporters after the game praising his team's resilience. And the boys did really well in the last line and especially with Ibu, Virgil, Connor, Joey and, and Kreef. So that keeps the game open. If you can keep a game open there's obviously always a chance but people stop believing in, in different moments and I think Maka was the calmest of the whole game the calmest on the whole pitch an incredible play what he, what he, what he had today. Yes, and Darwin maybe want to just show that maybe the song is not really right. The play, the 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 the, the, the no, um, Nottingham fans saying for his introduction. So a great goal, and for us, obviously, eleven days, four games, four wins is crazy. Okay, so that's Jurgen Klopp talking about the experience and the calmness of Alexis mm. McAllister, who's brilliant yesterday. He was brilliant, and he was able right at the end, wasn't he, to hold the ball and and sort of held off a, a sort of challenge from Tyro one year before he sort of chipped it back yeah. into the box, and then there was Nunes to, to head it in for that winning goal. Before we talk about the controversy that surrounds this game, I mean that resilience that we saw from Liverpool. Bear mm. in mind four games that they've won in quick succession in all competitions. They are hamstrung with injuries, shall we say. We know they've had to bring in academy players. Pretty impressive that they've, they're have they coming through this difficult time when it comes to injuries and, and getting wins on the board. Yeah, um, we're going to obviously praise forward players like McAllister and obviously Darwin Nunes. That's three clean sheets in a row for Liverpool. <laughs> Keller Which seems home. quite extraordinary because they've suffered a bit with chances against them. Um, so we have to recognise that. Um, I chatted to you early in the season there and I said, if Liverpool are going to have any aspirations of winning the league, Darwin Nunes has to be clinical mm. regularly mm-hmm. because we all know what he's got. You know, we all can see blistering pace, incredible desire, attitude, all the things you'd want from a player. But if he's clinical, that's a completely different ball game for Liverpool. That will add so much more to them. And yes, it was a perfect example of the chance he gets, the little flicked header, and yes, and the stage of the game it's at. Um, it's Liverpool are on a bit of a wave at the moment, a quest of a wave of belief. Belief is driving them absolutely everywhere to win things and to win games in the manner they're doing it. Yeah, that ability to get it over the line. Yeah, like there's a doing. belief there yeah. that someone, whoever it is, someone's going to step up. Mm. That is what exactly what Liverpool have been about in, in recent weeks, is that it doesn't matter. It's not necessarily going to be Salah or whoever. It's going to be someone will step up to the plate and make a, you know, a decisive action that ultimately gets them points or wins them a trophy like it, like it did with Van Dijk in, in, in the League Cup final. This is what's happening at Liverpool at the moment. Mm. So, Let's talk about the controversy then, which came a few minutes before that winning goal. And it came from a corner for Nottingham Forest. The ball's put into the box. Uh, It's headed away. Whilst it's headed away, there appears to be a head injury with Ibrahima Kanate. Paul Tierney is the referee. He allows play to continue for a moment, but he's clearly keeping an eye on Kanate, who has gone down with that head injury. And as we know, as is expected in all games, if there is a suspected head head injury, the game has to stop. That's what happens. He blows his whistle. With Callum Hudson-Odoi in possession of the ball, he's outside of the box. He's more towards the byline, sort of, 
closer to the corner flag, mm. should we say that that sort of area uh, where the, when the ball is stopped, when the game is stopped. Once Canate gets up, play can resume. What should have happened under yeah. the laws of the game, which is eight point two. If anyone wants to know <laughs> from IFAB laws, which is the dropped ball law, when it comes to a game being stopped, especially outside of the box, the ball should go back to the team that last had possession, which was Nottingham Forest. No. Had it have happened inside the box, it would be different because obviously it becomes maybe a bigger advantage for that team to have yeah. to have the ball in the box. So yes, Forrest should have had the ball. For whatever reason, Paul Tierney decides to give it to Liverpool, that drop ball, and, and essentially it's Quiven Kelleher that then takes the, the kick. And it, it and it does take a few minutes before mm. Liverpool then get the corner that then leads to the goal that they win the game with. Can you understand Forrest's anger? Because it did lead to a lot of their st- coaching staff, the owner coming onto the pitch, remonstrating with the referee. Um, cool. Who'd want to be a referee in the modern game, eh? Mm. You know, yes, there's an error. The reaction over the top, well, from an owner, first and foremost, I find quite shocking um, because that word's been used, um, as we know, that saying it was a shocking decision. um, I didn't feel that. It's an error. Mm. And I I feel like it's an innocent error by the manager, uh, by the referee, Paul Tierney. Um, but the reaction to it was way over the top. Now, people will say and argue, it's our Premier League status at stake and everything, and I get it all. But we can't go down the road of just everybody getting involved, the, the players, the managers, you know, the coaching staff, and then the owner. This is like tribal beyond belief. Mm. Now, Liverpool, when they had the bad decision go against them as Spurs, which was a really poor decision... Liverpool's reaction wasn't particularly good because yeah. they referenced that you know they'd look into it deeper and and I didn't I didn't particularly like it as a Liverpool fan. I thought, do you know what? It's a mistake and move on from it as quick as you can, and then hopefully along the way, you know, you'll prove you're such a good side you could overcome the adversity of a decision that was given against you that was clearly wrong. Mm. I would have liked Forrest to do that. Liverpool didn't do that, by the way, at Tottenham. They they made a club statement. Didn't, yeah, you know, so I, I I find it it's getting so over the top to d- referees making a mistake. You know, I just feel how far do you take everything all the time? Well, I don't think it ha- it helps necessarily that Nottingham Forest now have hired Mark Clattenburg as their referee <coughs> consultant. Now I might get it if you're keeping it in house and you just want let's review this game. Can you just explain why the the referee yeah. made that decision? But when he now comes out and makes statements and he spoke to the media and one of the things he says uh, at the end of what he was quoted as saying is that we will discuss what happened on the field of play today and we will look at the course of action in the future. I'm not quite sure what he means by that. I'm not quite sure what he's trying to gain from that. I don't think it's going to help matters because they're not going to replay the game. We know that. That doesn't happen. I just don't get that referee well, okay. analysis position that they've brought him in for because I just don't think it's going to help matters when so many of the laws are subjective. Now, on this particular incident, obviously, Paul Tierney has got it wrong. We know that. Completely and utterly wrong. Did Forrest lose the game because of that decision? No. We well, can make a lot of hypotheticals, can't you? What would course. have happened after? Do you yes. make up all, yeah. we and could have done this, they could have... Yeah. I totally understand why Forrest fans, and I, I do understand the anger. I do understand that, look, you didn't follow the rules correctly. And maybe if we had to have that drop ball, we may have scored from it because obviously hmm. they were in a attacking position when they would have won that ball and been given that ball back. But it didn't lead directly to Liverpool's goal because there was still a couple of minutes mm. until they scored that goal. There was a corner. They could have cleared their lines. It didn't happen. Forrest also had chances in the game prior to that. Likewise, Liverpool had chances before that as well to have scored. So it didn't completely alter the game in terms of it led to Liverpool winning the game. It is a moment in a, in the game, though, that is going to be analysed and will lead to criticism because it has mm. to, because it's completely following, not following the rules and the laws of the game. Yeah. But like I'm trying to say, and I do understand the anger, we've had Trent and Pete saying Paul Tierney was a disgrace, and I do understand it because it feels you've lost a game. It's a massive yeah. thing you've lost a game, but you didn't lose the game because of that one moment. No. There were many moments in that, that game. Can I just make one quick point as well, Nat, is that when you get Mark Clattenburg coming to a club at Forest, 
is ultimately going to be criticising what he once was as a referee because know, he's going to be scrutinising yeah. every decision. So then he's going to have to react. So what is his job now? It feels like he's going to have a bit of a conflict of interest, even though he's not a referee anymore. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. absolutely I, I just absolutely. feel it's a strange scenario because you've been brought in and what you're going to do is scrutinise every decision that goes. And, and there will be. Every club will have things go against them. Some will get more. Some will be harshly treated more than others. It's the same with injury lists. You know, injury lists are worse at some clubs than others. Yeah. Everyone has them. Um, I just thought it was a sad day for, especially the owner, you know, con confronting the referee. And I just feel, come on, this is, you know, I Turkish football used to be, you know, well known for this sort of behaviour uh, before, you know, and, it, and other countries, Greece, and mm. I've seen it in other... And I've always felt... We've never really had an owner, and I'm sure someone probably could pull out pull out one example. But going too far for me to to confront a referee over a decision. Well, I'm sure Nottingham Forest will have an FA charge over that the way yeah. they've handled that situation. Stephen Reid was was given a red card as well, wasn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, for the way he uh, approached the referee Paul Tierney, who was I think tried to sort of calm things down and and try to indicate we're going to have a com conversation. Let's have it outside, mm. not as outside, but you know, maybe in the referee's office or in the tunnel, wherever it is, let's not have it in this open forum where everyone can see. Um, ultimately, Forrest did lose that game, though, because of that Darwin Nunez goal, which means that Liverpool are now four points clear at the top of the table. Weekend Sports Breakfast with Natalie Sawyer and Tony Cascarino. Sunday mornings from 6 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.